Hello, everybody. Welcome back to yet another video. Today, uh, well, in this video, we're going to talk just a little bit about the essay assignments. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull them up. Really, I'm just going to walk you through what's going on in the instructions here, give you a little bit of a sense of um, what they are. As with everything else, this video isn't a substitute for fully reading these instructions. Rather, it's just to uh, walk you through them. So all right, let's give you a sort of orientation, some sense of what's going on in them. Um, so here are the instructions. Um, as I mentioned in the uh, video on the syllabus, each essay is worth 40% of the final grades that are worth quite a bit, which itself might be a little bit intimidating. But you can complete all five essays or, or you know, four of them or three or, or whatever you want. I want to count the best two essay grades that you have towards your final grade. Uh, so, and, and quite frankly, if you want to do really well in the course, I encourage you to plan on doing more than two papers so that you've got space to, to learn, to try something out, get some feedback from me, think about that feedback, incorporate it into your next paper. Uh, you can come and talk to me if you want. Uh, um, you, know, but, you know, I can give you a paperback and then you can look at the feedback and come talk to me and say, okay, I know you said this and this, and here's how I'm trying to do that on my next paper or um, you know, something like that. So. I encourage you to, to plan on doing more than, than just two. You can do all five. Doing all five is, will probably be fairly taxing, um, but you can, you can do as many as you want. Now, these papers are quite short, 900 to 1,500 words of body text. I think that's something like three to five pages. Uh, it really depends on your, your formatting settings, um, you know, which font you use and all that kind of thing. I'm not particularly fussy when it comes to some of that stuff, so I'm not going to tell you to use a particular font. It has to be something I can read. So don't use Wingdings or uh, some kind of Gothic script or something like that. Something just, you know, sort of boring and easy to read. Times New Roman, Arial, um, uh, Calibri, something like that. Um, so something like three or five pages. It's really the word count that matters, not the, the, the page count exactly. And the word count it is really just body text. So it excludes your name. If there's a title to it, bibliography or works cited or a reference list, that doesn't count. Citations, so footnotes don't count, or in-text citations um, don't count either. It, it can get a little fussy in, trying to, in terms of trying to figure out exactly how long it is with those in-text citations. But it, you know, I, I can figure that out if I really need to. Uh, there's a 5% penalty for not double spacing the essay, so double space the paper. One thing I want, just it makes my life an awful lot easier, both in reading and, and trying to mark it up. So double space the paper. I don't want to apply that penalty to anybody, but it's there because I know from experience if I don't have it there, I'm going to wind up getting some papers that aren't double spaced. Um, and that's just going to make my life more difficult. So it's really there just to really to encourage you to double space the essay. There's also a 5% penalty for going over or under the word limit. So for every uh, 50 words or part thereof over or under the specified word limit, there's a 5% penalty. So if it's 1,501 words, that's a 5% penalty. If it's 899 words, that's a 5% penalty. Uh, so you know, 850 to 899 is 5%. 800 to 849 is, is a 10% penalty for getting too short. Same with going above. So 1,500 to 1,549 or uh, 1550 is uh, uh, 5%, 1551 to um, 99 <laughs> is another one. So stay within the, the limit. Uh, and you know why, why do, am I putting that penalty on there? Really, it's, it's because part of the assignment here is writing the length. If you have that much space, what can you do in that much space? That itself is a valuable skill to have. As with the argument assignment, get it turn it in digital receipt when you submit the essays. Uh, if you don't get that receipt, you didn't actually submit the essay yet. So uh, what are the essays doing? Really producing arguments that engage with the course material somehow. So the essays, because they're short, they, they are quite short, part of the challenge here is trying to fit everything into the essay that you need to fit into it and produce a high quality product. So what the essays really need to do is isolate some aspect of the course material so they're not supposed to be comprehensive, they're not supposed to explain everything, but rather they're supposed to briefly explain the relevant course material with proper citations, take a clear position on that material, so stating a thesis, offering a conclusion, and providing good reasons in favor of that position, 
and then raising and responding to some kind of potential objection. So the argument assignment uh, offers a, a bit of a sample of this because there you have to state a, a thesis, you have to state a conclusion, you have to provide reasons, you have to raise an objection and answer the objection. The essays are asking you to do the same thing, but also asking you to engage with the course material and explain it, cite it, make your argument connect with that material rather than just be a, some separate argument about something else. Each essay should make clear connections between at least three pieces of course material, right? And it should utilize at least one film and one reading. So it could be uh, two readings and one film, it could be two films and one reading. You might even talk about four pieces of course material, potentially even five, potentially. Uh, you don't need to. So part of what's going on here as well is really orchestrating voices, pulling things and saying, okay, in this film, we've got the this, this scene that's really interesting. We've got this topic going on. In this reading, uh, somebody's putting forward the argument that, uh, you know, on, on the topic, making this point. And here's how that would apply to what's going on in that film or something like that. There are questions below and we'll get to that in a second here. So you should make clear connections between the, the films and the readings. Part of what you're doing is pulling these things together because of course, in this, the, um, the organization of our course here, we've got these films, we've got these readings, and sometimes the readings directly connect to each other, but, but not necessarily, but they're gonna be on the topic. They do connect to each other, they just don't make the connections on their own. And of course, we've got the films that are on similar topics, so there are connections waiting to be made here. Uh, and a lot of what went into my design of the course is trying to pick course materials that ha uh, have the ability to be pulled together in this kind of way. Now, so you've gotta take three pieces, draw some connections between them, and then really take up some kind of position. The essays are argumentative, right? This is what I'm looking for, I'm looking for arguments. I'm not looking for a movie review. I'm not looking for a summary of the reading. Uh, I, I, I know the reading, I know the films. Um, so don't tell me all about them, don't, you know, don't waste space, right? Just talking about parts of the readings or the films that aren't relevant. Now, uh, so part of what you also have to do is really think about what, what really matters. In particular, what really matters for the questions you're trying to answer, for the points you're trying to make. That's really um, another one of the skills that you have to keep in mind. So what you can uh, do in terms of uh, sort of, you know, good moves with the, the films and the readings, you can uh, use the argument or arguments in the, the readings to draw some kind of conclusion about particular actions or events in a film. So there's things that are going on in the film and you can draw from the reading and say, okay, if we take this theory and apply it to what was going on in this film, here's what kind of, of view or answer position we're gonna get and whether or not it's a good one or not. Uh, you can go the other way. You can use the particular actions or events in a film to draw conclusions about the arguments of particular readings. And you can raise and respond to potential objections that can be raised against your argument and, and every essay should do this. In fact, that's explicitly part of what I want you to do in each of them. So, uh, just sort of scrolling through again, read all of this. What do we have here? Um, a whole due date schedule for the different essays and the different questions each essay can potentially engage. So the first essay is the one due July 23rd. And on that one, the, the topic there is just the global skepticism topic. So this is about Inception or the Matrix. And there's two different questions. So, you know, the first question uh, concerns Cobb and Inception. So he's one of the characters or Neo and the Matrix. Um, talking about whether or not they're justified in their beliefs about how the world appears to them, right? The second question is about whether or not we have good reason to believe that the world is the way it appears to us, given what goes on in the films, um, Inception or, or The Matrix. Now, um, for these, these questions, I'm not gonna go ahead and, and read all of them. They might spoil some of the films, so if you haven't seen the films, um, when, in looking at the essay questions, it might sort of tip the hand a little bit and, and tell you what's, what's gonna be going on in the film or what's thematic. So if you, if you really don't want any, any kind of spoiler at all, watch the films before you even read the essay questions. Um, that said, I think probably reading the essay questions is going to prime you in a fruitful way 
to be on the lookout for certain things in the films. And, and if you want to write on a film, watching it more than once is potentially advisable, or even I would suggest you know, tr treat going through the film very much like a, a reading and take notes and even write down, uh, you know, uh, at, at this time, there's this very interesting scene that seems to speak to this issue and so on. So there are the, the five different essays. Uh, some have, you know, two questions, only, only answer one of the questions, only do one. Um, and it's going to pose some kind of question to you. And everyone also includes provide, um, you know, how might somebody object to your conclusion and respond to it? So for every one of these questions, it's going to pose something to you based on the films and the readings. There's some kind of topic here. There's some kind of issue. Answer the question. That's really what your thesis is going to be. That's going to be your conclusion. The essay itself should go ahead and uh, explain some of the course material, explain the relevant bit or bits of the movie, some of the scenes, right? Like this happens in the movie, this happens in the movie, and that connects to this topic. We have this reading over here and it says this and this and here's how that connects to the topic Just pull those things together answer the question and then think about how somebody might disagree with you right bring that up somebody might disagree with this conclusion or my argument in this kind of way and here's why that's not going to work very well so there's the five uh sets of questions uh so, so the five different essays uh, you know some weeks so in week two there's only one question there in week three there's four different questions there uh, some of them are very explicit in terms of the, the connection to the films they're asking about particular characters. Um, for instance, in for essay two, the question there, I didn't even uh, explicitly mention one of the, the films. There's going to be three different films for that one, Inception, The Matrix, and Ready Player One. So I didn't explicitly mention any of the films, in part because I want to really leave that one open for you. It's only one question, but you can try to go about answering it in a number of different ways. I'm not going to say any more right now just because when you watch the films and, and we go through that course material it's going to should be become fairly obvious different sorts of ways you go about it over time but now there's a whole page here on the fourth page of points to keep in mind read these carefully these are in many ways uh details so they talk about citations make sure you provide page numbers even if you're using apa format and you're only paraphrasing i always want page numbers be specific that's really uh keep in mind uh, provide timestamps when you're referring to films and citing particular scenes. Be specific and cite particular scenes. Cite particular points made in the readings. Don't just talk about them generally. Don't just sort of wave your hands like, oh, yeah, there's this film and it's about this topic and there's this reading about it too and that's pretty cool. Right? Like, get precise, laser focus, zoom right in on something and, and tell me about it. Um, you should be thinking in every sentence of your essays, how is this really contributing to supporting my thesis? How is this supporting my argument? How is this giving my reader good reasons to agree with me? That's really what I'm looking for. And ultimately, I'm going to be evaluating the, the essays based on a number of points. We'll get to the rubric below. But the, the clarity and sufficiency of the reasons provided to support the conclusion provided is really the biggest thing I'm interested in. I, it's not whether or not you're right. We're doing philosophy here. In some sense, for an issue to be philosophical means there's no obviously right or wrong answer to it. So really it's a question about whether or not the argument you put forward is the kind of argument that one is clear, it's the sort of thing that somebody could read and, and fully understand, say, well, that really gives me some reason to believe the position you want me to believe. Uh, so is it clear? And two, is it uh, at least potentially rationally convincing? Right? We're probably not gonna convince everybody. That's, that's just how these things go. We have different views on, on different subjects. But is it the kind of argument that it is a strong argument that even if somebody wants to disagree with you, they're gonna to have to look at it and say, well, I need to figure out some way to you know, really object to what you put forward here because you've put, to put forward strong reasons. And of course, I'm standing in as the sort of ideal arbiter of, of what makes for a good argument, but I'll sort of you know, make a little pledge here that I'm not going to bring an awful lot of, of biases, my own views to the table when I'm doing this sort of thing. Uh, I've read essays that, that I really give top marks to, and I think they're just fabulously put together that I ultimately disagree with. But it's really that question of, you know, the, the sort of argumentative uh, standard here. This is a second year university course. And so when I'm thinking about, you know, how well is that argument put together, I'm like, keeping in mind that, that thing. 
it's not like um, I'm expecting the same thing out of this that I would out of a PhD dissertation work or something like that, right? Given the exposure you've had to the material and the films and, and the course material and the discussions and everything, uh, did you articulate a clear argument? Does it hang together in a sensible way? Uh, does it offer good reasons in support of the position it has? Or do those reasons not really show what it's claimed that they show? So um, just coming back to these points to keep in mind, which read over, uh, use the original sources, right? Don't just cite the lecture slides all the time uh, or, or the video lectures. Actually cite the films, cite the readings. You can cite the lectures or, or lecture slides when they add something new. If you're using somebody else's exact words, put them in quotation marks. Failure to do that can be plagiarism. So be careful. Use your own words or acknowledge when you use somebody else's. Um, go to the library website. That's where you're going to find information on how to cite properly. I expect you to cite properly. In fact, there are some points at stake for doing that, but we're not going to take a whole unit out of the course to talk about how to cite. I don't care which style you use. You can use Chicago, MLA, or AP. You can use any of those three. Just pick one, use it well, use it consistently. So if you're already using one or you have a favorite one based on other coursework you've done, use whatever you want. Just keep in mind, I want timestamps for the films. I want page numbers to the texts. So that's consider that the one wrinkle based on uh, whatever the, the other sort of normal way of, of using those uh, styles are. Let's see, keep the language formal and professional, define your terms when you need to, um, assume your reader is an intelligent and unbiased person, so they don't have the uh, specialized knowledge you do, they haven't you know, read our course material, they, they don't have all that, that special stuff you do, but it's an intelligent, you know, other undergraduates do. Really, that's, that's who I'm thinking here. So if I have had to explain a term to you to make it clear because it's something new, you should explain the term if you're using it. Not only does that make it clear what, um, to, to a reader unfamiliar with the term, what it means, it makes it clear to me what you mean when you're using the term. So clarity, 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 clarity is what I want. Make your arguments as clear as possible. If they have any assumptions, Try to flag those, just clearly indicate, well, look, I'm assuming that this is true and from that something else is going to follow. So think about that. Um, the essay should have brief introductions and conclusions, like no more than, than half a page each. Remember, these are short pieces, so you've really got to get to the point. Um, there's a bit of a checklist here in this last point. So introduction should achieve the following. Identify, identify the topic of the essay, right? This, what's the subject matter, right? Something like, is reality the way it appears? Does something have to be real to be valuable? Right? Something like that. Identify the key materials used. So just name the films uh, or, you know, the, the authors of the, uh, the names of the pieces you're using. State a clear thesis that anticipates the reasons to be offered in favor of it with a because clause, right? Uh, just think back to the example instructions for the, the forums, human, uh, cloning ought to be banned because something, 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 right? And that, what comes after the because, those are going to be the reasons you're offering in favor of your position. And so that's going to tell me what to be on the lookout for. And provide a rough outline of the paper so the reader knows what to expect, right? Uh, and so in thinking about the introduction, one, don't put any filler in there, right? No, philosophy is really important. No, people have talked about this subject for a thousand years, right? Don't, no. No, 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 no. Put in a sentence that does each of those things, and you'll have a good introduction, right? A sentence that identifies the topic of the essay, a sentence that identifies the key materials to be used, a sentence that states your thesis and anticipates the reasons, a sentence that outlines what the paper's going to do, right? First, this paper's going to explain how this topic appears in this film, and then it's going to go on to discuss these two articles um, and, and ultimately support the thesis or something like that. Like just, what, what, are the, what are the sections? What are the big moves? What should I expect? Is it going to be organized thematically, topically, by subject material, right? Just in a sense, what can I expect? What's the order going to be? Am I going to hear an explanation and then an argument? Or what's that going to be like? Keep it really brief. And the conclusion, the conclusion ideally, really no more than a third of a page, briefly summarize the paper, Restate the thesis and the uh, reasons offered in favor of it, and briefly restate the um, 
it, whatever the objection was that you considered, every paper should consider and respond to an objection. So what was the objection? How did you respond to it? And note any limitations on the argument. You had to assume certain things or there are certain parts you just had to set aside. What were those? So keep them brief. The introduction, conclusion, really just try to get to the point for the whole paper. Just try to get to the point, right? No filler, no content that's just window dressing. None of that. Right? So every sentence should be trying to achieve something. Now down at the end here for the last few pages, there's a rubric. So there's six components to the rubric, and then there's four potential levels. So when I go through and, and grade the paper, I'll go through and give you a score on the rubric, which is built right into Turnitin. So you know, for writing, if it's really well written, you've got a comma out of place, and there's one word not spelled right. That sounds like excellent writing. So you'll get a level four on the writing. Right? Level three is, is good. So level four is A range. Really, this is the way to think about the rubric. Level four does not mean you got sort of four out of four on writing, right? So the rubric is, is qualitative, not quantitative. The rubric doesn't add up to a final grade. Rather, it's indicative of how the various parts, uh, the, the quality of the various parts of the essay. So the writing, excellent writing, might have a few little issues in it, you know, maybe a few little issues, but largely, you know, really, really well done, right? Good, level three, it's really B range. Right, B range, anywhere sort of in B. It could be a strong B, a weak B, anywhere in there. This is where we've got some issues. There's certainly some improvements that can be made in the writing, but largely speaking, sentences are put together well. It's understandable. Nothing in the writing really poses a barrier to, um, you know, understanding what's going on in the piece. Level two, that's really more like C level. This is where we might have some sentence fragments, probably several issues in in the grammar or, or spelling. Those issues might be interfering with actually understanding the points that are being made. Level one, lacking, this is really a, a DF range on any of the components, um, say for writing, that, that range would be that I have extreme trouble understanding what's going on in many of the sentences, right? Just based on the, the way they're put together, the, the spelling, the grammar, sentence construction, and so on, it's very, very difficult to understand what's actually happening in those sentences. Uh, the structure of the paper, this is overall organization as well as the introduction and conclusion, right? Um, I'm not going to go through each of these, but here again, really, when you're looking for um, a qualitative description of the best kind of work, look for the level four, right? Look at the excellent. Sentences connect in a fluid manner. Paragraphs exhibit logical structure and ideas within themselves and connect to each other intelligently. The essay contains a succinct, detailed, and informative introduction and conclusion, right? That's in a great paper, top marks, that's what I'm looking for. Then we've got thesis, the essay's central point, its conclusion, right? You're gonna have a clear, carefully worded thesis, present at the outset, kept in focus throughout the essay. The thesis is worth stating and defending, and it clearly anticipates the reasons provided for it. That's what I wanna see, that's, that's the best. Quality of the critical, critical engagement, your argument, the, the reasons, right? The essay supports its thesis with excellent reasoning. The reasoning is careful, detailed, and precise. Full answer to the essay question is provided. A worthwhile objection is raised and responded to in a plausible manner. And that's, that's what I'm looking for in the argument. Explanation of the course material, right? Relevant material is accurately and aptly explained without including extraneous material. So you really pick out what you need to, you explain it well, succinctly, where it's detailed, accurate. And of course, citations, the use of the course materials. This is the longest piece and it really sort of spills down there. Um, so you've got sufficient notes. Whenever you've made a claim about what's going on in the material, which is really something that goes beyond common knowledge, right? You say, oh, in this piece by this author, they say this thing. Well, where, right? The average intelligent undergraduate student doesn't know that. They have to be shown that. There has to be evidence for that. This is what citations do. So you're, when you're making claims about the course material, you're pointing to where those, uh, where it happens. You're pointing to the evidence. So if anybody ever asks, well, I'm not sure, show me. That's what the citations are doing, they're showing. You're providing page numbers to the, uh, the readings. You're providing timestamps to the films. You're formatting the citations correctly based on the citations that you're using. You've got a work cited or a references list at the end based on what style you're using. So if you're using APA, you have a references list. If you're using works cited, you've got uh, uh, MLA, you've got a work cited. If you're using Chicago, you've got a bibliography. So if you use the long notes in Chicago, you don't necessarily need a bibliography, but that's a particular point in Chicago. So take a look at the rubric, right? Look at 
the, the excellent range. When I give you the essay back, when I've graded it, you'll get it back and you'll have a level for each part. So for each six of those, right? Best papers, it'll be level fours all the way, excellent all the way. Even if you get level fours all the way, as I've said, what that's indicating is that every part of the paper was in the A range of quality. So if you have level fours all the way, that doesn't mean you get 100% of the grade. It's not that there's four levels, six parts. It's not that I'm grading it out of 24 points, but rather each component of the paper was in the A range. It could have been at the top end of that, it could have been A plus, could have been A minus, but it'll be in the A range. So if you get a paper back and you've got all fours on the rubric, it was an, certainly an A range paper. If you get it back and it's all level threes, it is a B range paper, right? Each component was in the B range, so it was a B range paper. They're all in the twos, it was the C range paper. Um, now, now these, of course, it's highly likely um, well, okay, it's very common that a paper is not getting all the same scores in the same range, um, right? The writing might be excellent, but the thesis isn't very clear. Or the structure is wonderful, but there aren't enough citations that aren't formatted properly. So you might get a mixture of scores, right? You might get a level four on the writing, and a three on the structure, and a four on the thesis, and a two on the critical engagement, or, or whatever it might be. And then these do come together. So. Um, when you're thinking about the, the course, the writing and the structure are the two pieces that, that matter, but in some sense matter the least on their own. But if the, the writing is unclear or if the structure is, is somewhat jumbled, you know, things aren't organized in a, a sensible manner or there isn't a, a solid introduction and conclusion there, that can actually get in the way of the clarity of some of the other components. So the writing and the structure on their own are in some sense, worth the least. So if you sort of look at this and go, oh, I don't think I'm a good writer. Don't focus too much on that, right? I'm, I'm not so interested in making you a great literary writer. What I'm really wanting you to do and to, to practice and develop in this course is writing clearly and reasoning clearly, articulating an argument for somebody else to look at and examine and think about and, and um, right, engage with. So it, it's not that we're trying to develop great literary talent. Not that there's anything wrong with that. We're trying to develop analytic writing skills, argumentative writing skills. That's really what we're focusing on here. So it's really the thesis, the critical engagement, the explanation of the course material and the citations that are the most important. And there, when you're, you're looking at it, a, a fairly easy way to think about how the rubric corresponds to the grade is that for, uh, particularly for these four components, every step down in um, uh, one of these, um, generally, or, or at least roughly corresponds to a step down in terms of uh, the letter grade. So if we're thinking, you know, the best paper is an A plus paper, um, and, and again, I'll reiterate that paper might have all level fours and all be excellent, it's still not an A plus paper because not every one of those components was the best it could have possibly been, but was strongest enough, uh, strong enough that it's in that, that A range, that excellent range. Um, but if we're looking at this, right, and we see, uh, okay, a lot of things were level four and then a couple of these really important components were knocked down to level threes. That itself is gonna correspond to steps down in terms of the, the letter grade, right? So you can expect at least two steps down. So, uh, you know, if you've got sort of mostly level fours, a couple of, of level threes, well, you know, if we go from A plus, that's gonna be down to probably at least an A minus, but depending on um, how strong the various components were and, and where in that range of the various levels, um, the components of the, the essay were, it might wind up shifting around a little bit. So I'm happy to talk more about that at some other point, particularly if you want to come talk to me once you've gotten some feedback on a paper, if you, you get a grade and you look at it and you say, oh, I'm, I'm just a little uncertain about what went wrong here or why I got that uh, rubric score on that component, by all means, feel free to come and talk to me. Once we have a paper in hand and I've read it and, and provided comments, that's really when we can have our, our most fruitful discussions. Uh, but if you've got something ready ahead of time, if you want to run something by me and have me look over it, this condensed course makes it a little difficult to, to do that. But if you plan ahead and, and plan some time to come talk to me, send me a bit of a draft of something, I can try to give you some preemptive feedback on that as well. Okay, I'll go ahead and stop this here. Go ahead and read the full essay instructions to really get all the information, all the details. But this should give you some sense of what's going on in there and what to expect out of it. Until my next video, which should be uh, tomorrow at this point, 
I hope you're doing well. Uh, you'll see me again tomorrow. Bye for now.